Where does Allah tell you which are the deviant, which are the ambiguous verses and which are the unambiguous verses? So those verses that are related to the unseen. Where does Allah say that? Uh, I accept your scholars say that. I'm not disputing your scholars say that. I accept Muslim scholars say those that are talking about the unseen. But where does Allah make this distinction? How are we doing, Uncle Nassam? You okay? Good to see you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Don't, can, don't block the shot. Don't block the shot. Don't block the shot. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Right, we, can I ask you a couple of questions? Um, sure. Maybe after I'm done, I'll finish this. Uh, how long do you think you'll be? I mean, uh, I guess it depends on what questions are. Because, it's about Islamic Taweed. Um, essentially, essentially, the the, the question is. Um, oh, hi. How are you? Can you hear us? Can you hear the uncle? Okay, okay. apparently the uncle is picking up both and you, you've got your own microphone. So I don't think I'm that old to be your uncle, but uh, if you want to call me uncle... you got more grey hairs than me, so I'm just trying to be polite. Okay. So, um, can you worship the face of Allah? The face of Allah? Yeah. I've never heard this before. But it's a simple question. Can you worship the face of Allah? Or can you worship the hands of Allah? Or can you worship the shin of Allah? Yeah, so um, in, there's no kind of uh, face of God, or there's no hands of God. Uh, but what you find that both the Bible and the Quran, uh, in the Semitic languages, they yeah. use the expression um, in order to um, either make some kind of emphasis or some point, or some idiom that the, uh, people at the time would have been familiar or, or not. So like when the Bible refers to God as a rock, yeah. or the Lord is my shepherd, it doesn't, doesn't mean physically God is a rock. But, Agreed. But it's an expression. Yeah. So yeah, the Quran also uses similar type languages for God, yeah. but it's not meant to be taken literally. So at least in Mainstream so you, you you believe the Salafis are wrong when they assert that Allah does have a face and he does have a shin I'm not and he's that much familiar with the Salafi creed, but yeah. at least in terms of the mainstream orthodox Ashari uh, and Maturidi. Yeah, okay. They wouldn't take this. So you see these physical. descriptions as metaphors? Yeah. Okay. So when so we you can check any stuff there, so like Pastor Jalain, for yeah. example, uh, they would interpret these as being metaphors. What what what's the prophetic justification for interpreting them as metaphors? So, one is uh, Surah 3 verse number 7. Can we pull that out? Uh, when it speaks about this, you probably already know the verse uh, beforehand. Um, it speaks about there's two types of verses in the Quran. Sorry, one second. Um, Surah 4? I thought it's chapter 3 verse 7. Chapter 3 verse 7. Right, let's get to it. Bear with us. It's a bit windy. Uh, chapter 3, oh gosh. By the way, do you plan to interview Trent, Trent Horn on your uh, podcast? Oh, I'd love to. He'll be a good guest to have on. Yeah. Uh, recently I've been listening to him. And, uh, so, it, here's what it says. So, it is he who has sent down to you the book. She follow her. In it are verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundations of the book. And, no, sorry, there's no and yet. Hold on. al Faharid and Hudud. Laws for the puni. Oh, sorry, that's also. These are in yeah, brackets yeah. Or yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to eliminate the black brackets. It help, yeah. There's so many, so many brackets. Yeah, this There's even brackets within brackets. Yeah. You know, verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundations of the book, and others not entirely clear. So as for those in these, in whose hearts there is a deviation, uh, they follow that which is not entirely clear thereof. Oh no, that's a bracket as well and seeking for its hidden meaning, but none knows its hidden meaning save Allah. That one. Yeah. So why, why does that justify the idea that the hand of Allah is not a real hand? Uh, usually this verse is used to interpret uh, verses related to the unseen, like the afterlife or God yeah. uh, or angels. Yeah. Uh, so those verses are seen as being ambiguous or with the Shabia. Right. Um, so, so those meanings are the, the exact meaning is left to God, like God alone knows best. Right. Um, but um, in order to um, explain these exp expressions, uh, just to the lay or average person, the traditional approach has been to explain them like as metaphorical expressions or idioms. Okay. And this is something that's not new. So, no, no, of course not. Would you would you agree, therefore, that I am legitimate in saying? 
that the actual interpretations given to the unambiguous verses is entirely man-made, but you could argue justified based upon the precedent of the Quran. It's man-made. I don't have it. it's, an, it's, it's, it's humans' understanding of, of God's word. Right. Attempt to understand God's word. So, so all interpretation is man-made. Does the Quran claim to be clear guidance? Uh, it, it claims that there's verses that are clear. Uh, and these are the foundation of the book and then there's other verses which are unclear and God alone knows the precise meaning of these. Does the Quran claim to be clear expositor of all things? Um, yeah, I know the verse that you were referring to but I have to look at their commentary. Yeah, uh, because, because the, the right person. fair enough, because the Quran, the Quran claims that it is clearly, um, it's in Surah 12 verse 111 so I don't know if you want to pull it up in the Arabic. So it says, uh, if I've got the right place, uh, indeed in their stories there is a lesson for men of understanding is not forged statement but a confirmation of which were before it and, oh no, Oh gosh, the, the, the brackets, honestly. And a detailed explanation of everything and a guide and a mercy for the people who believe. So if it's, if it's a clear explanation of everything, which is what the Quran Arabic says, doesn't it? Yeah. So what, if, the, if the Quran is explaining something, why do you need to invent something else? Uh, I'm interpreting this like in the light of chapter 3 verse number 7 yeah. which says that there are verses in the Quran that are clear and yeah. then there's other verses which are open to its interpretation yeah. are ambiguous yeah. uh, but in terms of the true meaning God, God knows those meaning which is why when people have explained those verses about you know the hand of God and the face of God yeah. well let's end by saying God alone knows best yeah. so, so the understanding of the hands and the Allah we've agreed is something that men have made up in sincerity yeah. yeah, and that that there there is no. We also agree that it's not necessarily wrong. It, uh, well, it, it could be right. It, it, it could be right, but it could also be wrong, couldn't it? And and do you not agree but that to insist that this particular interpretation is right and the other one is wrong, like the Salafi it, do? It seems like the, the Quran condemns it in that same verse in chapter three, verse seven. Yeah, it says that those that try to uh, seek the meaning. Can, can you just confirm that in the Arabic, the Quran claims that to be a, a detailed explanation of everything? Um, that those are the words of the Quran. So, kulli shay means everything. Yeah, kul means everything. Uh, every and shame is thing. Yeah. Um, so everything and a guidance and a mercy to a nation of believers. Right. So, so it is claiming to be an explanation of everything. Uh, yes. Right. So that that would it would be fair to say it's it's an explanation of everything that the Quran touches upon, rather than say it's an explanation of Einstein's physics or relativity or the particular events in history that happened. Yeah, yeah. I, so I'm be, I don't want to be unfair to the Quran because that that would be to strawman Islam, and I don't want to be like the Dawah team who strawman Christianity. So, <coughs> if the Quran is saying that it is a perfect explanation of everything, therefore, of what the Quran touches upon, we must surely expect the Quran to explain to us what the hand, the shin, the face of Allah is. Are you able to offer a Quranic explanation to those things, rather than relying on the interpretation of uh, a scholar? Yeah, so verse number three, uh, chapter three, verse number seven, yeah. um, says, uh, but those who are, uh, um, when it says that the verses uh, in the book are clear, and then there's verses that are ambiguous, yeah. um, or unspecific, um, as for those in, in whose heart are deviation, yeah. they follow the unspecific verses in order to create like disunity or, or disharmony. So, the, so to be clear, so the God left it in this way. So, so Allah is deliberately doing this to lead those who have deviation in their heart into deviancy. 
wrong. Well, it doesn't say that. Wait, wait one second. What does it say? It, it's just it's descriptive rather than. Descriptive. It says and so others not. It says so as for those whose hearts there is a deviation, and then we've got to skip the brackets and seeking for its hidden meaning. But none knows its hidden meaning save Allah and those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say we believe in it the whole of it. Yeah. Right, but the thing is, if they are firm in knowledge, they are firm in what Allah has revealed, right? <laughs> they, they believe in the Quran and all of it be from God. So, so where does Allah tell you which are the deviant, which are the ambiguous verses and which are the unambiguous verses. So those verses that are related to the unseen. Where does Allah say that? Uh, I accept your scholars say that. I'm, I'm not disputing your scholars say that. I accept Muslim scholars say those that are talking about the unseen. But where does Allah make this distinction? Uh, so like in the beginning of the second chapter. Begin, let's go to it. Uh, it speaks about the characteristics of the believers. Do you want, can we, can we pull it up? What, what chapter and verse please? Uh, verse number, chapter two, verse number three. Chapter 2, verse number 3. Bear with us one second. Uh, and forward. Right. Bear with us. It, speaks, it describes the characteristics of the believers as opposed to the characteristics of those people who have a deviation in their heart. Right. Let's look at it. Because what I'm looking for is where Allah creates a distinction between the seen and the unseen. Okay. Okay. So in, what is it? Surah 2, verse 3. Yeah? Yeah. And forward. Who believe in the gaib and perform al salat and spend out of what we have uh, what we have provided spend on themselves their parents their children their wives and also give charity to the poor and also in Allah's cause sorry maybe I've got the wrong place surah 2 ayah 3 yes yeah, so al gaib means the unseen so it's given the description of the believers who believe in the unseen yeah but it, they believe in the unseen but where those ones are ones that are firmly rooted in knowledge great but but that i agree yeah. i'm not even arguing about it i agree the allah says allah says that the, the characteristics of the believers is that they believe in the unseen but where does it qualify that which is the unseen to that which is the ambiguous uh, through the descriptions of the believers in my understanding but, but where so in chapter 2 verse number 3 when it's but, describing the believers yeah it's describing, describing that they believe in the unseen great as but it, opposed to those but people. where does it categorize where does it put in the category of ambiguous the unseen because if the quran is claiming as it does in the verse that i showed you that it is that it is a, a an explanation of everything and we've got to be fair to the quran and say and limit that to an explanation of everything that the quran touches upon then that means then that means then that means that we should expect the Quran either to lay out for us this category that the unseen is the ambiguous verses or verses about the unseen are the ambiguous ones because all we've got is a description that there are some verses that are unambiguous and some verses that are ambiguous but no clarity from the Quran at least about which these are from the perspective, like like I said, it describes the believers as opposed to those people that um, want to... Yeah, your brother wants to give you a verse. Or, uh, Do you want to take a minute to read that and see if it answers my question? Does it, does it address the question? Um, this is about... Um, I didn't, I covenant. didn't, I didn't. What, what does it say? Uh, it's about the covenant of the children of Israel. Yeah. Um, I, see, I didn't, I didn't. I was looking for something else, but your phone didn't give me the, the app is different. Okay, okay. So, so my point to you is, right, like, bearing in mind that the Quran tells me to consider this book. So I'm considering it. And what I see is one part of the Quran says that there's ambiguous verses and unambiguous verses. And then another part of the Quran that says that it is the perfect explanation of everything. The word perfect, you're adding that yourself now. Oh, sorry, maybe I did, maybe I did, sorry. A, a complete explanation of everything. We can always go back and recheck it. Well. Okay, let, let's have a look at what the verse said again. It was 12111, wasn't it? So what it, what it said was, uh, let's go to it. Sorry, you're right. I don't want to put words into the, what the Quran says. I want to let the Quran speak for itself. That's what I'm inviting you to do, let the Quran speak for itself. It says, indeed in their stories there is a lesson for men of understanding, it is not a forged statement but a confirmation which were before it and other scripture and a detailed, there we go, 
a detailed explanation of everything. Yes, so the Quran is always telling you that it includes verses that are clear as well as ambiguous verses that are open to So, So where does the Quran identify what are the ambiguous verses and what are the clear verses? Because the Salafi, the Salaf, no, yeah. I mean, you're, you're coming from, a, I guess, an Ashari position or something similar, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. The, but the Salafi would say, well, the Quran is clear. Allah has hands, Allah has a face, Allah has a shin. And, and therefore, it's clear we can neither deny it nor can we say it's like anything in creation. That's what the Salafi position would be. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. You're saying that they're wrong. I don't know the exact Salafi position, but. This is, I, I gave you the I'm not exact. A yeah, I gave you the exact Salafi position. So they, the Salafi and the Ashari argue about what's clear and unclear about the Quran. So you've surely got to go to the Quran to address that argument. When they Salafi, they are arguing about what is clear, what is not clear. I'm sorry? Where do you, where do you get this from? Salafi, they argue arguing about what is clear, what is not clear. So the Salafi would argue... No, where do you get it from? So the, so the Salafi would argue... Where do you get it from? Okay, if you're just going to be rude, I'll just go back to talking to him. Okay? Yeah, no, no, so, I mean nothing. Just I mean just asking, do you have like a reference where you could read about the Salafi belief about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it, I, I've, I've watched many uh, a video put up by Salafis on YouTube where they expound their doctrine inside the mosque as they're teaching. Did they give any reference? Oh yeah, they did. Lots, but I can't remember them all. Maybe you know? another time. Yeah, maybe another time. But, but, but they, they seem pretty convinced that when the Quran says Allah has a face, he really does have a face, prove you, so you know? Video, no, I'm talking to you because he's just going to be rude. If I tried to talk to him, he'll yeah, interrupt me. But to me, that sounds like some kind of uh, pagan or... Sorry? Uh, that sounds like idolatry to me. Idolatry? You so you... An image of God. It even seems to contradict the Ten Commandments. Yeah, I, I agree. I, 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 think, I think there's lots of problems with the Salafi position. Because even you yourself accept that there's certain verses in the Bible that speak about God that you don't take literally. Yes, absolutely. We, we would adopt a very similar position to the Ashari. But our concept of revelation is different from the Islamic concept of revelation. Well, you know Bible that. Has different that genres genres of revelation. That, that, exactly, exactly. So we've got different genres of revelation, but our understanding of revelation is that the Holy Spirit is guiding the prophets and the apostles to teach us, and they teach us in men's words. But the Quran is, as you believe, the starting point of the religion. I'm not misrepresenting Islam, am I? That's fair, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So when the Quran states, that it is a clear explanation of everything. Now, we obviously limit everything to everything that the Quran talks about, because to do otherwise would be to straw man the Quran. I mean, I don't, don't want to do that. But then you quite rightly point out that the Quran also says there's ambiguous verses and unambiguous verses. So that means that when the Salafi and the Ashari are disputing about whether the Salafi are guilty of idolatry for saying that Allah has a face, that you have to go to the Quran to show that you have to go to the Quran to show that the the verses about the unseen are the ambiguous verses. Can you show that? Yeah, I feel satisfied with my answer. It may not be satisfied to other people, but at least uh, to me, I'm satisfied. That chapter 2, verse uh, uh, 3 and forward, this gives a description of the believers. And for me, this is through the description of the believers describes as to uh, what verses we may understand as being ambiguous. Uh, those verses related to the unseen or related to revelation or from the past or, or the unseen, more specifically about God, the day of judgment, the hereafter. Yeah. Would you? Would, would it be fair to say that we, we can, can always move? No, we can, can always move to a quieter place. You know, we can agree to disagree. It's fine. But I think this is. I'm fine. With that. That's fine. I'm. I, I'm. I'm sure we will end up disagreeing. Let's yeah. face it, does, does a conversation at Speaker's Corner end in any other way? So, so let, let, let's, let's look at this. So, and also I feel like we're repeating... But, no, I, no I'm going to analyse your argument now. Uh, because you, you've, you've staked your claim on this verse. But, but I, I want to demonstrate to you, Uncle, that, that you're following a circular logic. And I want to show that to you. So you're, you're saying that this verse is the verse that identifies the ambiguous and the unambiguous. But here's actually what the verse says. Who believe, so this is a description well, of Muslims. Saying, like, the believers, those that believe in the unseen, like through them, yeah. um, uh, I come to understand about the, uh, this relates to the unseen that they hear after. Yeah, yeah. So, so here's what the verse describes. Bear in mind, the verse is describing Muslim believers. It's saying, who believe in the unseen and perform salat, 
who spend out of what we have provided for them, spend on themselves, their parents, their children, their wives, and also give cha to charity to the poor and also in Allah's cause, jihad. Now, well, actually, actually, that, that all I've just read there is brackets. All it actually says, this is actually the verse. Yeah. Uh, the brackets are annoying. Let, let's get another time. Yeah, that. yeah. Who believe in the unseen and perform salat and spend of what we have provided for them. That's it. That's all the verse says. There is nothing in that verse that tells you that verses about Allah's face are ambiguous, unambiguous verses. From the unseen when it says al So there's your circular logic. So God is unseen. The and this is your circular logic because you're saying that because your scholars tell you to say that. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that based on my, my, my limited understanding. Well, I'll go back and see what the commentary no, so is. Right, so you're appealing to the scholars to tell you what the Quran says. And the Quran, therefore, is and the Quran. You're just going to have to ignore the interrupters. I get this. Anyone I speak to, I get this kind of thing. There is a verse in the Quran that also says, um, Laysa um, There's nothing comparable to God. Yeah. There's nothing like Him. Yeah. Uh, so even this can be used to interpret the other verses that speak about face. And, and that's exactly what the Salafi do. They say that the hand is not like anything you can think of as a hand. But you're saying that the hand is not really a hand. You're saying that the hand is a metaphor for something else, yeah, like one of Allah's activities, that explanation in the which is a much more Christian be. way. That, that that's yeah. much like a Christian would do it. You're right to point that out. Yeah, yeah. We we would do that. And also Orthodox Jews as well. Like yeah. Uh, Moses Maimonides. As well. Yeah. He interpreted them. So like Christians, that. Jews, and Muslims, or or Ashari Muslims, Mainstream. are much closer yeah. most Muslims than are Salafi Muslims. Muslims. I agree. I agree. But the point that I'm getting to you is that you are unable to show me the justification from the Quran of which verses are ambiguous and unambiguous based on the Quran. But the Quran claims to be a, per, a, a clear explanation. What are you talking about verses? Again, you're rude, so I'm not talking to you. Finish the verse, finish the verse. Sorry, go on, you were saying. Finish the verse, finish the verse. The answer is in the verse. Okay, so what I propose to you, why I propose to you this is this, Uncle Nassam. If your Quran has an internal contradiction, should it be believed? No. Right. Because in chapter 4 verse 82 says that um, had this book been from anyone other than God, then surely they would find in it many uh, contradictions. Exactly. So here I am, I'm commanded by Allah to consider the Quran, and Allah says to me, if I can find a contradiction in this Quran, I shouldn't believe it. And you agree. I am pointing out to you a contradiction in your Quran. Reconcile the contradiction. I'm happy with that. Contradiction they are in your but head. your explanation, your explanation, and in your book and your head. no, in your explanation, only, only, only appeals to a verse that doesn't talk about the subject. The subject is to do with the unseen. No, the subject. No, you've misunderstood my argument, Uncle. My argument is not about whether the Quran talks about the unseen. Of course, the Quran talks about the unseen. My argument is the Quran, despite claiming to be clear explanation of everything that we rationally limit to the Quran's statements, doesn't explain what is the ambiguous and the unambiguous. It gives you no Quranic verse, justification. In the end of the verse, there is a, a and so this is a contradiction. Just read the end of the verse. That as a contradiction because the verse itself. And he talk you. about like you that the people who they have diseases in their heart, they follow in. Read, read, read full verse. Um, yeah, follow your brother's example. Uh, in chapter three, verse seven. Chapter three, verse seven. Three verse seven. Go on. Yep. Which, which bit do you want me to, to draw out? For some reason I can't. It's okay. I've got it here, and we've got the Arabic there, so you could just read it from my Quran. I just don't like the uh, translation. That's fine. The I'll hold it if that's all right. You can read it in the Arabic. Okay. Um, uh, he is who sent down to you uh, the book. In it are verses which are established or clear. Uh, these form the mother of the book, and other verses are mutashabihat or ambiguous. Um, as for those in heart, uh, uh, there is, I think this word means disease. Yeah. Um, 
they or is, follow the yeah. um, the unclear or the ambiguous verses. Yep. And um, this this one I don't know. It's okay. Arabic ain't your first language. You've been Arabized. No, I'm just learning. So, yeah. 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 Uh, as for those uh, parts is, uh, is a de deviation. deviation they follow that which is not entirely clear uh, they're seeking, seeking to uh, uh, seeking for its hidden yeah uh, fitna uh, yeah. which is um, yeah 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 I know what fitna is um, and seeking for its hidden meaning uh, but none knows its hidden meaning except God right so yeah when the Quran says that um, it's an explanation for everything here the verse is telling you that with regards to the ambiguous verses yeah no one knows it's, it's hidden meaning except God. But, but here's my so criticism. No, I, I get you. I, I fully accept that, that you have... Knows the meaning of I, I fully accept that you have shown me a verse of the Quran that gives you two categories. Ambiguous and unambiguous. I get it. I, I fully on board with you. Completely agree with you. The Quran gives you two categories. Ambiguous and unambiguous. But the Quran doesn't tell you which ones are ambiguous and which ones are unambiguous. Does it? For me, the audience would know which ones are ambiguous and which ones are clear. So why do Salafi and Ashari disagree? Um, if it's obvious, why do Salafi and Ashari disagree? They agree that these verses are ambiguous, but to do with the inter explanation or the interpretation of these particular verses. Right. The disagreement isn't whether these verses are Mutashabi or not. Yeah. So the disagreement is over the interpretation. Yeah. Uh, and if you insist one meaning and not the other, then that itself you can be uh, fall into what the Quran seems to be condemning those people that just seek to, uh, seek to create hostility by seeking after the unclear verses. And, and I, I, again, I will accept your explanation that Salafi. Um, that's yeah. That, that I'll accept your explanation again. That Salafi and Ashari uh, and the other schools of thought. They all agree about which are the ambiguous verses and the unambiguous verses. I'll accept that. But do they accept that on the basis of the Quran alone? Or do they accept that on the statement of the scholars? It's assumed, like from reading the Quran, it's assumed that uh, which verses are clear and clear. Assumed by who? Uh, the reader of the Quran or the audience. Right, so that means that, that, that Islamic deen is, is, in, is being invented by men. I mean, God is also giving us uh, the intellect, and God also wants us to use our, our, our brains. Can, can intellects be wrong? Uh, yeah, people can be wrong, yeah. Can entire societies come to the wrong conclusion? Yeah, of course. Does that mean it's possible that the Ummah can come to the wrong conclusion? Uh, it's possible, yeah. Yeah, so... That's why there's no um, blind, blind belief or blind faith in, but, when it comes to creed, matters of creed. But isn't, but isn't this exactly why Muslims say that, you know, Men can be wrong, so therefore we've got to appeal to revelation. Right, so I'm asking you to stop appealing to your scholars and appeal to your revelation. I accept you've demonstrated two categories exist in the Quran, but where does the Quran tell you which ones are the ambiguous and which ones are the unambiguous? Those verses that are related to the unseen. Where does it say that? Like people would already know, like it's assumed. So there you go. It's like, assumed like by the people reading the book, yeah. and that's my point. That's not from Revelation. Have you got a hadith, maybe? God is not speaking to us like in a vacuum. Yeah. Um, like the Quran comes, like when people already, you know, use certain things already, and the Quran addresses in that context. Yeah. M Muslims believe in the hadiths. Yeah. Yep. I I've asked you to show me where the Quran defines for you what's ambiguous and unambiguous. And your reply has been consistently, well, it's what people assumed. But you acknowledge, as I not acknowledge, that people can be wrong, entire communities can be wrong. And so there is no basis to believe that assumption. Yes, but there's no basis for that assumption. So well, if you can't, if, if you can't, uh, Nas, Uncle Nassam, if you can't show me, don't, don't compliment his rudeness. I have to think about that. Okay. But with, with Hadiths, I don't take too much interest myself. Um, and as you know, there's like hundreds of thousands of Hadiths. Uh, but I, I'm just more interested in the Quran. Okay. Would you, would you accept that as someone who is um, asked... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to? Conclude? Yeah, we've come to a conclusion. So here's my conclusion. You have failed, for now, to demonstrate to me where the categories are defined. The categories are given, but they are not defined. And you haven't shown me any verse in the Quran that defines that the ambiguous verses are connected to the unseen. The Quran says that you should believe in the unseen. The Quran says that some verses are ambiguous and some verses are unambiguous. But the Quran doesn't say what defines an ambiguous verse and what defines an unambiguous verse. For that, you go to the scholars. And this is the point about Islam being invented. I personally wasn't going to the scholars, I was just from off hand, like just thinking of the answer. Yeah. Yeah, it was something that I'll go back and think about. Okay. And see what Maybe come back next week with a, a proof text. Yeah, in the future, yeah. Alright, I look well, forward to that. You. Thank you so much for your time, Uncle Nas. Now, I know you've got a Bible. On my phone, that's it. <laughs> have you have you not got like a gospel or anything tangible in your hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah in my house, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I want to I want to give you a gift, and you're more than welcome to question me about Christianity. Then, not that one. That's for women. I want I want It's just a devotional book. Okay, thank you. Is it mine? It's yours. Oh, it. Um, I'm not sure who the author is. It's like we, we Christians, we use these devotional books. As a, as a, it's an aspect of our spirituality that we read a verse and we reflect upon how it changes our being and, and how we should act and, and behave in the world. I'll take that into consideration. All right. God bless you. Take care. Would you like to ask me some questions about Christianity? Would you like to ask me some questions about Christianity? Okay. Would, would, would you worship? Okay. Would you worship the face of Allah? Yes, I worship the face of Allah. You worship the face of Allah. Would you worship the hand of Allah? I worship. I worship everything what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told me to worship. Okay. Does 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 that mean worship Him? I worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yes. Brilliant. So does is is Allah's words a, a, a part of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, the word is eternal. Do you worship his word? I don't worship the Quran. You don't, don't worship the Quran? Yes. So you worship some parts of Allah but not other worship, parts of Allah? I worship the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what you say, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we not worship the Quran. Okay. okay. So you so so is the Quran the word of Allah? Yes, it is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the word of it Allah. Is to write in what, you, what we have, but it's not the word. So are these words worthy of worship? We not worship the Quran. So you don't worship the words of Allah? But they worship the word of Allah. So, the, not worship. so are these the not Quran, the words of Allah? The Quran has no conscience. So this is not the, the words of Allah? The Quran has no conscience. So this you is the word of Allah. Does the face of Allah have a consciousness? Does the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you didn't told me, then I don't know. Okay, so so you, you're not sure no, 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 if no. the face of Allah has a consciousness. Listen, listen. Do you say, you say, who have, Jesus has said, who have seen me have seen the Father, yeah? Yes, we believe that. Huh? Yes, we believe that. Jesus has a beard, the Father has a beard. Sorry? Jesus have, has a beard, the Father has a beard. Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. No, the, 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 when, when we say, no, 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 Jesus you've asked a, a question, no, you've asked a question. Straight away. I don't, I'm I don't going like, to, I, I'm I going, like, no, no, no. Like, I don't you can always walk away. I don't. I don't play that one. Sadly, this is. Sadly, you just can't have a. You just can't have a decent conversation with this guy. Yes, no. This no, no. God, 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 the Father does not have a beard. God, the Father. Then how you say who have seen me have seen the Father? Great question. Yes. Now let me answer it. Yes. Right. So when Jesus said, "He who has seen me has seen the Father," yes. In so far as. The, the, the divine personality can be captured in human form, mm -hmm. it is captured in the person of Jesus Christ. So he who has seen Jesus Christ has seen the very person of God. When Jesus Christ speaks, it is the words of the Father. When Jesus Christ acts, it is the acts of the Father. It is just, the heart of the Father. Just the work of the Father. When, when God, when Jesus he said to, in Matthew, when he said to that woman, it's not good to give the 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 the, the bread to yep. to and uh, to give it to the dogs. Yep. In in that moment, he was presenting God. When when where Jesus is God incarnate. That's you know what we believe. I know what you believe. But in that moment, when he said, "Is that the Father talking?" 
those are those those, those, were those yeah these the this is the very personable nature of the is father the father called that woman yeah. a dog yes the father calls that woman a dog i don't believe now that. now let me because he's going to walk away so let me just explain that so let me let, let me let me just explain that let me just explain that so the words notice he got off and this is this guys is what you've got to see and recognize is that when you uh, push upon islam the Muslims will try to get off the topic as quickly as possible because their religion is in contradiction. Their religion is undefensible to a rational mind. So when Christ says it is not good to give the food of the children to, to the dogs, the word that he uses in the Greek is like a puppy. It's not an insulting language. It's, it's a diminutive language. It's the same in Spanish, and JC behind the camera will be able to verify this, that they'll say things like Chiquita, which means, which means little girl, not Chica, just Chiquita. Yeah, it's a, or, or, or Perro, they'd go, per, is it Perquita, how would they call it? Puppies, we call it Cachorros. Cachorros. Perros. Yeah, Perros and Cachorros, two different words. So Christ used the equivalent of the word puppy. This is why the woman didn't feel insulted. She felt emboldened to continue to press for a response to her prayer request. And who was she praying to? Who was she supplicating? Jesus. She was saying, Jesus, answer my prayer. Jesus, heal. So the Muslims have to answer this irreconcilable contradiction. Their God is made up of parts. And if they deny the parts of God, then they make the Quran into nothing and meaninglessness. Which it is. Which it is, a self-contradicting book. If they assert that God does have parts, they accept that God is a composite, a differentiated unity. And therefore they have no argument against the Trinity. Exactly.